Hello, my beautiful people. How are you doing? How is business? How is the family? Because I know everything is bubbling, everything is kicking fine. I like mm -hmm. that. You know, I know I will start without, I mean, asking about your well-being because it's very, very, very important to me. My name remains Priscilla Sawe, and you're welcome to Precision. Welcome to another interesting episode on the Precision. On Precision, we talk about those who have been so impactful in the society. We celebrate them. We discuss how they are arrive at success and how they manage success and today all of that we shall be bringing you so don't move away from your tele screen we are in the ancient city of Ibadan G-R-O-A Iyagoku to be precise where our guest for the week resides so I wouldn't want you to move away from your tele screen just sit back relax and enjoy the show candidates in Oyo State, Nigeria. Yo, welcome to our show. I must say it's a very huge honor for me to have you on our show. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, man. Okay, who are you? How would you describe yourself? Hello, my name is Chief Mrs. Angela Sengiatu Folayo. Okay. And I'm the wife of Senator Tesla Folayo. Okay. So, let's talk more on your husband, who is Senator Tessin Folarin. Um, Senator Tessin was um, the Nigerian Senate leader in the Senate in okay. the year 2007 to 2011. Okay. And before that, he was a member of, his, um, of the Fifth Senate from 2003 to 2007. Okay. Um, he is a Lagunal Lubadon of Ibadaman. He's a title chief amongst his peers. Okay. And, um, He's a citizen of Oyo State, a law abiding citizen of Oyo State, a father and a husband. And a brother, <laughs> <laughs> a lover. <laughs> of course, we all know that. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the candidates for government. Yes, I am the candidate for the PDP. Yes. In the forthcoming elections. Okay, okay. You said you are a chief. Yes, I am. Okay, how, what, I mean, what's your title? Is it just. Chief of what? I don't know what to put it. Um, I recently got made the Adadi Ikoma okay. of Oyo State by the Igbo General Assembly. Mm -hmm. And so the high chief. Um, basically, I'm the first daughter of all the Igbos okay. in Oyo State. Okay, Ada, that, that's the Adam. first daughter. Yes. yes. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Uh, could you please give us a little insight into your early years? Um, I was born on the 23rd of July in 1974. Okay. I was born in Ibadan. Okay. Yes, like New Hospital. You grew up here? No, I was just born here. We left here when I was about two years old. Okay. Um, I grew up mostly in the north. My father was in the army. Okay. And um, spent some of my secondary education in, in the north. Okay. And then um, immediately um, after that, I proceeded to the United Kingdom. I studied my A levels in the United Kingdom. I went to Green Hill College in Harrow, and uh, my university education was done in London at Thames Valley University, where I got an LLB in law, okay. and um, went on to um, do my articles at a law firm in England. Okay. And several years later, I came back to Nigeria as a trained solicitor. Okay. Um, and Back here in Nigeria, I went to Nigerian law school, 
left my mandatory two years of Nigerian law school, did my NYSC, and went to work for the World Bank at um, a World Bank sponsored project at the uh, NACA, National Action Committee on AIDS. And um, that was what I was doing until um, I decided to go into my private legal business. Okay. And that's what I pretty much do till today. Okay, we're here in Ibadan. No, in Abuja, but in Ibadan, um, we're pretty much more con concerned with the campaign. Okay, okay. And that's primarily what I'm doing here in Ibadan. No, no, no. As the wife of a bacterial candidate of the PDP in Loyal State, what are the steps you are taking to support your husband's ambition, political ambition? My husband is somebody that I regard really, really highly. Okay. And um, of course you can say that's because it's coming from me, but I um, objectively and independently regard him extremely highly. Okay. Um, the, he has a very quiet nature. He's very, very unassuming. Okay. But um, on top of it all, he's extremely private as a person. And he doesn't, he doesn't speak much at all. He's really? very quiet, yes. And because of that, I think it's kind of impacted negatively on his politics because I know the real person in, behind the man. Okay. But because he doesn't project himself or he doesn't, um, he doesn't like noise, he doesn't like shouting from the rooftops, a lot of perceptions have been created in the media and by political opponents about him. But um, we're doing a lot to, to change all of that. We're doing a lot to get him out more, for people to get to know the real person that he is. Um, I think um, most of all, um, as a wife, I, I would say I'm his chief protector. And because of that, I would say that um, all protection comes from God. Therefore, the most I can offer is my prayers. Um, he's um, quite competent to, to sell himself. He's, he's gotten this far with God. Therefore, all I can do is intercede also on his behalf. Wife to God. Okay, you from your name, I think you are from the eastern, eastern part of the country, and your husband is from I mean, he's a Yoruba man. How, how, I mean, do you, how were you able to blend to flow along the sky when two people come from two different uh, backgrounds, two different tribes, mm -hmm. with different cultures? I mean, how do you blend? Um, first and foremost, um, because I said to you earlier, I lived in all parts of Nigeria. My father was in the army. Okay. Um, I spent my formative years in the United Kingdom. So um, I pretty much can get along with anyone. Okay. I come from Delta State. I come from a place called Ubuluku okay. in Delta State. It's very near Asaba. So you can call me a Bendel Ibo or a Delta Ibo, okay. if you wish. Um, my husband and I met through a mutual friend, and um, we decided to get married. I, 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 I speak Yoruba fluently, I speak Hausa fluently, I speak Igbo mm. fluently. So uh, there wasn't any cultural issue between us okay. or anything. We just, it's just a man and just a woman, and just um, love each other and just have a family. We just blend as a family. So how do you combine your political ethics with your private home? Um, do they not say that the wife of a politician is a politician? And it doesn't mean you're going off shouting from the rooftops that, oh, um, or something like that, no. But um, you sit down at home, you receive a lot of visitors, people come with their problems, you solve them, you talk to your husband on behalf of the women, the underprivileged children, you talk to him on behalf of his, you try and make, um, settle him and some of his political opponents. Try to iron out a lot of misunderstanding. I think all these require some sort of political sagacity on a woman's part. Okay. So I think if I can do all, I'm able to do all of that while sitting at home and being a mother and a wife. Okay. Um, I suppose that's where the, the correlation exists. All right.
you relax. It's my duty to make sure that every fast-paced situation is cooled down okay. and the tempo is cooled down. So what I tend to do is that I make sure I, I, everybody, when everybody comes back and everybody's all stressed out and like everybody uh, we relax, I have drinks, I have food, you know, we can talk, laugh. My husband is a fantastic family man and he likes to spend a lot of time with me and the children. Yeah. So we tend to, sometimes we swim, um, mm. sometimes we watch movies. You swim? Yes, we I do. I like that. It's well, 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 I don't know why I made you swim here. <laughs> <laughs> but you have enough time for that. Okay, okay, do you have time to cook for me? Yes, of course I do. You still cook for him all and house her, does everything? No, 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 of course not. Okay. What's his favorite meal? What's every man's favorite meal? He met me, he said, Don't get the wrong girl, let me show you. And he showed me. I and I learned and I never forgot. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, what steps are you taking to ensure that your children reflect your good image in the society? Um they say that we are custodians, we're mere custodians of the children, and we bring them into this world. I suppose. It's God that um, decides whatever happens with our children. We just, our jobs are just to move them. Um, I'm, a, I'm a strong Christian and okay. um, um, I just believe in um, a spiritual, good spiritual guidance and uh, to be physically present in their lives as well, to be able to be, to, to be able to encourage them um, and um, be there if they need to talk to you, be a, be a friend to your children. Let them not be afraid to go outside. Uh, sorry, let them not be afraid to come home and talk to you instead of going outside and talking to others. Just, it's a, a, always good to encourage mothers to be close to their children and that way their children um, tend not to stray. But you're a Christian and your husband is a Muslim. Yes. So, how do you call? Eh, well, um, I haven't, um, we haven't had any problems with that. Um, Nigeria is a very secular society. Yeah. And uh, my husband is, and his family are very tolerant about my religious beliefs. I'm okay. very tolerant about his religious beliefs. And indeed, a lot of couples in Nigeria um, are of mixed um, religion. religion okay. and, and it's never come up between us. In the mornings, we felt immediately when we wake up, we would say our prayers and we continue with our day. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, was there any time you thought of becoming a politician or becoming a first TV? Not at all, as a matter of fact. Um, no, um, I've just always been very keen to support my husband with whatever he's wanted to do. And so if he's decided to answer the call of the people that he should contest for governorship, um, I have no other um, option than to support him. That's the right. Okay. Well, there are so many women living below average life in the society. So what are your plans to empower these women? What do you mean by below average? As in, in average income? Average? Yes. There's several causes of um, poverty. There's um, lack of education, lack of employment, lack of um, skill, the requisite skills, um, lack of awareness. And um, one should, um, if, 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 if I had the opportunity to, I would, and I always have as a matter of fact in my life, try to empower women by advising them that um, you should seek some skills that will be able to translate into a, a, a better economy for your home. Okay. And, um, Good education, a good background, instilling that in your children to prevent, prevent um, the next generation from falling into this same hole. Um, and hard work, you know, Nigerian women are hard working women. And if the enabling economic environment is there, I think that the Nigerian woman will thrive. Okay. You have a very nice figure. <laughs> I admire your figure. You look sweet. You look gorgeous. How do you? Do you know I mean, how do you keep this figure? How do you maintain it? Do you go to the gym or you don't eat much? No, I just eat clean. Um, do you mean eat clean or not? Um, I, I try not to eat um, a lot of fried food. I like to, I like to eat green vegetables. Um, my favorite food, I would say, is amala and mm -hmm. Yes. And you are good at preparing it. Yes, I actually like F4 as well. Mm -hmm. I like F4 real. F4 real. Yes. A four pet, a four go pet. I'm only eating so I'm only going on and vegetables. That's nice. And less, less oil. Okay, as little oil as possible. 
You look gorgeous in your outfits. You know fashion. Are you fashion freak? Don't say no, I don't agree. I'm a bit of a tomboy. <laughs> <laughs> so what informs your way of I mean dressing? I I I grew up kind of climbing trees and stuff like that as a boy. I'm more comfortable, you know, not wearing jewelry and being heavily uh, dressed up and all that. A, a lot of people are fashion victims. And people just feel that, oh, you have to dress this way, you have to wear this and that because you're this and that. I believe um, the status of a wife of a, a high chief in Ibadan um, dictates that you dress a certain way. And um, I try to adhere to that. Okay. I, I, if I'm going out, I try to have my hair covered, my shoulders covered, you know, okay. trying to dress um, responsibly, really. Are you on a ladder? No. No. Not yet. yet. Not yet. yet. Not yet. <laughs> Determined to, you know, provide um, shelter and food for for their families, and um, it's my it's also my hope that I'll be able to assist these people. And why are they your role model? Why such people your role model? Yeah, because role models don't have to be the most successful people in the world. Role yeah. models can also be the the most caring people in the world. Yeah. Role models are also people who will be able to. Bring something out of nothing because they have responsibilities. Mm. So, uh, basically, I'm just trying to say that the most responsible people in the world are my role models. Okay, okay. That's fantastic. I like that. So, what is your advice to upcoming female politicians or those who aspire to, <laughs> those who are aspiring to become the first lady? Well, the first, first ladies are not female politicians. First ladies are people who, by some accident of fate, are married to a man who later in life becomes uh, a governor or a president or something like that. So I wouldn't say somebody wakes up and says, oh, in my life I'm going to be a first lady. In my life, I woke up one day and I said I wanted to be a lawyer. And I'm a lawyer today and that's what I'm, proud, I'm, I'm proudest of in my life. And if I'm being called the first lady, if my husband became a governor, by the grace of God, then that would be just a nomenclature. Mm -hmm. But um, I think people should just learn to grow to be responsible. That term, first lady, I, I think it's, um, it's just it's a nomenclature. Thank you very much, your excellency. Nice your excellency. No, no, you don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have an election to win. All right, thank you very much. Like I said, the other time is a very huge honor for me to have you on the show. Very huge honor for me to be on your show, man. <laughs> thank you very much, thank man. You. We've been chatting with Barrister Chief Mrs. Angela Simbiat Folare. We, you've had a lot from her, the wife of the PDP bilateral candidates in or your state of Nigeria. She has said a lot about how it all started and what she aspires, I mean what she aspires and what she intends and her plans for the citizen when she becomes the first lady of the or your state. I must say thank you once again for coming to our show. Thank you very much. So when next we invite you, I just say you go home and you come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what we said. Goodbye, thank you very much for joining us. On behalf of the entire production crew, we say thank you for staying with us. Join us again some other time. Until then, stay blessed. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.